case one more time. The security sensor was placed on the moving bookcase. Shuichi also had the receiver. But he had it turned off. And so when Rantaro moved the bookcase, a picture was taken without the alarm sound. Then taking advantage of the camera's interval timer. Shuichi hid in the library and murdered the shit out of Rantaro! And then he grabbed the security sensor from the bookcase and returned to the lookout spot. Afterward, he set off the receiver in front of Kaede on purpose to make her think the murder had just happened. Praise be to Atua! We've solved this case! Let's go over the case one more time. The security sensor was placed on the moving bookcase. Shuichi also had the receiver. I turn this lie into the truth! Sorry, you guys. I forgot to tell you something important. Forgot? To tell you the truth, it was me. I had the receiver. Huh? Shuichi could have turned off the receiver. If that is true, then the entire premise of the argument thus far is wrong. Is this true, Kaede? Uh, of course! Come on, would I lie to you guys? That only screw yourself over. If we mess up, you're dead too, you know. Well, perhaps you want to cover for Shuichi, even at the cost of your life. Huh? I cannot imagine why anyone would risk their life to lie on another's behalf. Words from a true heartless robot. Emotions are only for meat bags. That is a harmful stereotype. I can produce heartfelt remarks through calculations. Shuichi are pretty buddy-buddy with each other, so I wouldn't doubt that. Plus, the way Kaede just acted right now, I'm pretty sure she lied. A talented liar like me can spot other people's lies easily. Well, what do you guys think? To believe or not to believe, Kaede? shot that fell from the vent. How did it strike Rantaro's head from that distance? Yeah, that's impossible! It's not like it started rolling on its own. It fell from the bookcase under Rantaro's head. Maybe the shot was on the floor. And Rantaro tripped over it, causing him to hit his head on the bookcase? Watch out so you don't slip and fall! What if Rantaro's corpse moved on its own? under the bed when the shot hit his head. Then he walked a few steps before he finally dropped dead! Hey, Shuichi. Don't lose sight of the truth. The shot that fell from the vent. How did it strike Rantaro's head from that distance? It's not like it started rolling on its own. It fell off the bookcase under Rantaro's head. Maybe the shot was on the floor. And 
and Antara tripped over, causing him to hit his head on the bookcase? Watch out so you don't slip and fall! What if Antara's corpse moved on its own? Like he was standing under the vent when the shot hit his head. Then he walked a few steps before he finally dropped dead! You see each I always know the truth. Well, actually, maybe this shot didn't pass through the vent. Did you not just tell us that the shot traveled through the vent? That's true, but I just remembered the library's vent was closed. The vent was closed? So I think my deduction might be wrong. Shuichi? I see. Shuichi, we both investigated the vent. But you misunderstood something. What? I closed the vet grate while we were investigating, but it was open before. Does this mean Shuichi's testimony was based on a misunderstanding? That's a lie. It's not a lie. But depending on your deduction, it could become a lie. Shuichi, please answer the question. How did the shot reach Rantaro? You know the answer. You just heard it during the debate. The shot rolled along the top of the bookcase and fell on Rantaro's head. Rolled along the bookcase? I did say that, but would the shot have rolled that conveniently? It has nothing to do with convenience. The shot rolled exactly how the culprit wanted. Yeah. See? Shuichi, 
she agrees. There's no trick. It's magic. Inka, why do you look so surprised? Wait up, Shuichi. Why are you trying to white knight your way into Himiko's heart? Just so you know, Himiko has already chosen me as her one and only soulmate. But if that trick was actual magic, then I'm more inclined to believe she's the culprit. If you can perform mysterious miracles, couldn't you have just swapped places with Ryoma? What? No, wait. Ryoma couldn't have been killed by the piranhas. If the piranhas are using my show are special, they only dead flesh. Only dead flesh? What the? Are you just pretending to be nice to Himiko so she'll tell us the truth? Uh, no, that's... Are you sure it wasn't the piranhas? We saw Ryoma reduced to bones. He totally died from all the piranhas' chops, right? No, Ryoma's death was not caused by the piranhas. The Monokuma file indicates the cause of death is drowning. So it wasn't the piranhas then. Drown. I haven't checked the Monokuma file yet, so that's news to me. You lying little brat! Telling lies is what turns you into a degenerate male! <laughs> so what? Ryoma drowned, Himiko changed places with him, and then the piranhas ate him, right? No, Himiko only had 60 seconds to escape from the tank. Even if they change places at the start of the show, that's insufficient time to drown someone. If that is the case, then when did he drown? I met with Rihanna the previous night. What a load of crap! What, do you only see Rihanna at night? Yes, I didn't meet with anyone else. Did anyone see those two together? Surely they would have come forward already. If no one can prove that this meeting took place, then there is no reason to believe your testimony, I'm afraid. As expected, Maki is lying to us. If you can't prove your claim, then it's the same as an outright lie! What a load of crap! Do not you only see Ryoma at night? Yes, I didn't meet with anyone else. Did anyone see those two together? Please explain. Well, Kaito and I train together every night. And yesterday, because of the insect meeting group, we started late. Huh? Ah, Kaito, don't worry. You don't have to say anything. Anyway, we were doing some frog squats on the school stairs. When we heard two people talking, People talking? We knew one of them was Maki, but we couldn't pick out the other one. But now that I think about it, it must have been Ryoma. What? Uh, yeah, maybe. That was probably around midnight. Wait a minute! If you heard 
heard their voices, then that means... So Ryoma and Maki did meet up. No, no, hold up! Why'd you sit on that info for so long? Because until just now, I didn't think it was relevant. I had no reason to bring it up. Now, now. We don't know if Maki was really talking to Ryoma, right? That is true. If I knew for certain, I would have said so sooner. But considering the circumstances, I can't imagine it being anyone but Ryoma. None of us were talking to Maki last night, correct? So it must have been him. And nobody say you suddenly remember talking to Maki. Way too late for that. And you two did not confirm who Maki was talking to at the time? If I overheard a conversation in the middle of the night, I surely would have checked. We are still part of a killing game after all. Whoa, chill out. Why the scary face? That was my bad, but it's not really manly to eavesdrop, you know? I wouldn't do something so uncool. Anyway, I know that we heard those voices. Maki is not lying. Then Gonto will believe Frank. If you're gonna believe him, just like that? But Shuichi has no reason to lie. Yes. If his lie leads us to the wrong culprit, he will join us in eternal sleep. Not the problem. The crime was committed at night time. And you have no honor. An alibi for night time? I believe most of us do not have one. I have evidence that proves you're the culprit. Do you think we would fall for such nonsense? The trick will lie on complex mechanisms to work. But someone like you could be skilled enough to pull it off. Preposterous. That could have been done by anyone. Kirumi is thin and has a nice body. She and Ryoma could have totally shared the interview. We all could have, except perhaps don't. I, of course, am not the culprit. Crime was committed at night time. And you have no alibi. An alibi for night time? I believe most of us are. I always know the truth. Maybe we can't prove everyone's alibi, but we can still pinpoint the culprit. How so? Last night, Kaido and I heard Maki speaking with Ryoma. But I haven't mentioned what happened after. Hiromi, any thoughts? Did you return to your respective dorm rooms? Yes, we did. But I couldn't fall asleep, so I was awake until morning. Which allowed me to hear a certain sound in the night. Last night, I heard the sound of someone leaving their room and exiting the door. And after some time, I heard the sound of them returning. Could it have been the culprit? But all you heard was a sound? That doesn't mean you know who made it. Indeed, it doesn't. But I didn't hear the sound of someone going down the stairs. Which must mean that whoever left has a room on the first floor. No one on the second floor left the dorm that night. So everyone on the second floor has an alibi? You cannot determine the culprit with just that. On the contrary, once we rule out the second floor, we know who the culprit is. Because preparing the ropeway required time to be spent in the gym. It's extremely likely that the culprit helped set up the magic show. In short, 
Himiko, Angie, Kaito, or Hiromi. I see. So among the four, the only one with a room in the first floor of the dorms is... Yes. Only Kirumi. Hmm. You heard a sound, huh? Well, I hear a load of BS. But unfortunately for you, Kirumi, your time's up. We already know you're the only one capable of setting all this up. Right, Shuichi? Right. The only person who could have prepared this murder is Kirumi. Well, the preparations in the gym, in any case. And why do you believe that? Before the culprit could put the body into the tank, several steps needed to be taken. Like tying the rope to the gym window and putting a partition in the piranha tank. That's right. The Oma's body entered the gym from the window. That required preparation. That could only have been done when Kirumi was by herself in the gym before night But Kirumi was alone in the gym for only, like, five minutes. Not enough time for the whole murder, but enough time to set it up. Enough time to tie the rope on the window frame and put the pain in the piranha tank. Sneaked in during the seance by crawling out of the floor. But it looks like black during the seance. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain had a light. Light? New candle? I mean, Kiba's flashlight function. Huh? Now hold on a second. Kiba could have used that function to get under the floor and sneak into the empty room during the seance. I said, hold on a second. He used his robot functions to commit the murders. Hold on a second. The culprit sneaked in during the seance by crawling under the floor. Because it wasn't under the floor. You see, our villain had a light. You mean candle? I mean, Kibo's flashlight function. Huh? Now hold on a second. Kibo could have used that function to get up. I always feel the truth. His flashlight function, correct? Did you not notice? I didn't notice what? The drawback of the flashlight function that you added. Right. Even Kibo can't see when it's turned on. Hmm, I see. That bright, huh? Wait, what? There's no way a genius like me would make that kind of rookie mistake! But you make mistakes a lot. A lot. Hey! If you're gonna fuck me in front of everyone, at least buy me dinner first! If you can't see... It doesn't matter how bright the area is, we couldn't move like that. So Kibo couldn't have been underneath the floor. Is that true, Kibo? 
Remember, really, I'm sorry. Oh, we did it already. Just turn it off. We're gonna go blind. You don't remember? What does that even mean? Well, Shuichi, trying to make a fool out of me, huh? Let me put on some makeup, cause I wanna at least look pretty before you decide to fuck me. Uh -huh. That's, uh... Shuichi, I'm so sorry. Damn, that is seriously bright. Wouldn't the light have shined through the gaps of the floorboard if it had been this bright? I think we couldn't have used the light under the floor. Not even people. Oh, they couldn't have. We were there after all. We would know. So far, suicide seems to be the best explanation. Her plan was to take us down with her. So she hid her true intentions. She died during the sale. She could have secretly brought the secret and then stabbed herself with it. Finally, with the last of her strength, she threw the sickle underneath the floor. All the pieces fit. Suicide seems to be the best explanation. Her plan was to take us down with her. So she hid her true intentions. She's not that kind of person! But if Tinker did commit suicide, it would explain how she died during the sale. She could have secretly brought the sickle and then stabbed herself with it! Finally, with the last of her strength. I always feel the truth. Tenko couldn't have thrown the sickle under the floor. Because she died instantly. Instantly? I'm certain of it. My investigation determined that she died instantly. What's your opinion, Maki? I'd like to hear from someone who specializes in murder. Maki. You're right. I completely forgot about that important detail. Tenko died instantly. <laughs> Words of a true killer. Pretty sure we can believe everything she said. How could you forget that, Maki Roll? You better apologize to Shuichi. Performing the sales in that room was Himiko's decision, was it not? What if someone steered her into picking that room? Of the three empty rooms, I just got the room. Because you laid your trap there. Was 
was trapped only in that room? Other rooms may be trapped too. Yeah, even if Himiko picked the room, someone else could have set that trap. Your opinions are empty words. Performing the sales in that room was Himiko's decision to so. Pure coincidence? The culprit gambled on the middle room being picked through coincidence? That seems highly improbable. Pretty sure it didn't matter which room Himiko chose. What do you mean? It's getting kind of boring, so I'll explain. She didn't choose the middle by coincidence. Each room was the same to begin with. Each room same? Remember what Gonta said earlier? Maybe the culprit placed traps in all the rooms? Well, that was correct. Before the trial, I hurt myself checking all the rooms. That's right. Kokichi found another loose floorboard in one of the other rooms. Well, well, I didn't find it so much as I stepped through it and tripped. Whoa, hold on! There was also a loose floorboard in the next room? So the culprit prepared a trap in all three empty rooms, not just the middle one. If the culprits had traps in all the rooms, then they wouldn't need to select a room themselves. So the real trap was for someone else to pick a room and take the blame. version was part of your plan, right, Kaito? Well, Kaito, last words. What do you mean, last words? Kaito 
log out first by himself. You were still logged in though. That's when the poison was. I always know the truth. Wait a minute, Kokichi. You couldn't have been killed with poison. And it's much too early to decide that Kaito is the culprit. But why? I think it's already too late. You guys are taking so long to realize that people can kill others in a snap. Have you forgotten? The bottle we found at the scene was an antidote, not a poison. It's not like you could have been killed by an antidote. What? Are you serious here? Come on, Shuichi. That bottle definitely had poison in it. Didn't we check the label? Is this fun for you, messing with a trial? Hmm? Well, I mean, this is where it gets fun for both me and the culprit. So, what's this talk about an antidote? We'll just say you misunderstood the whole thing, Shuichi. We all know you wouldn't lie. Uh, of course. I'm sorry. I was just misremembering. But, Kokichi, you're misremembering as well. You were the one who told us about the warnings on the label. If you remember what was on that label, you'll see that your argument is flawed. What warnings? Was there something like that on the label? Um, so what does that mean? It means that Mew couldn't have been killed with poison. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, what if you're mistaken about the antidote, Shuichi? Uh, right. Well, for now, forget the antidote. Let's focus on exactly what was written on that warning label. Even if your avatar slid off the roof, would it slide off that quickly? Duh, it would. It would make that much noise. We must have built up a lot of speed. Lots of snow piled up on roof. Not frozen solid, right? We'd still slide, though. In the real world, it might be difficult. But in the virtual world, perhaps not. It's not the issue. Sliding down snow is easy to do. You just need a sled or skis to cut the friction. There was nothing like that around them. Even if your avatar slid off the roof, would it slide off that quickly? Well, duh, it would. It makes that much noise. Up a lot of Lots of snow piled up on roof. I'm not frozen solid, right? You'd still slide, though. In the real world, it might be difficult. But in the virtual world, perhaps not. It's not the issue. Sliding down snow is easy to do. You just need a sled or skis to cut the friction. There's nothing like that. There was something the culprit could have used to slide the body. The signboard. The signboard? You put Mew's body on top and use it as a kind of sled. 
You could use it to spike the body, but the signboard we used as a bridge was the only one. The culprit couldn't have used that signboard as a sled. There was another signboard. Huh? Another one? Do you remember the first time I went to get the signboard? There were actually two there, but I only brought one. The culprit must have used the other one as a sled. But then why did you say there was only one signboard? Uh, to mislead us. She was planning a crime, after all. <laughs> oh my god! That line was so cringy! Stop! My stomach hurts! Wow! Shuichi is lying on purpose! Are you trying to spice up the class trial, too? Kokichi, I was the only one who went and got the signboard. Only I saw them. So why do you think I'm lying? Because I know. I know the culprit. And the whole trick. What? Then tell us! We can put an end to this class trial right now! <laughs> I could tell you, but I think we should save the best for last. Even if I told you, would you guys really believe a liar like me? I could be lying without knowing who the culprit is, for all you know. What? I mean, all of Shuichi's deductions are lies, you know. You're right about the culprit putting Mew on a sled and sliding her down the roof. But instead of a sled, they used that thing from the storage room. You mean the lattice, right? I didn't go to the roof! I've had enough of your lies, man! I'm not lying! The rooftop door was locked and I couldn't open it! So what did Kokichi do? I turned back at once, of course. And stayed in the salon the whole time, you know? Fire's burning hell, you know! You're lying! I'll set your pants on fire! That's fine, because I'm not lying! Why do you look so nervous? I didn't go to the roof! I've had enough of your lies, man! I'm not lying! The rooftop door was locked and I couldn't open it! So what did Kokichi do? I turned back at once, of course, and stayed in the salon the whole time. I always knew it was true. Kokichi, you're lying right now, aren't you? Huh? Lying about what? Just before the murder occurred, I went to the salon to check on you. But you weren't there. What? Really? I waited there for a while. You never showed up. What's this all about, Kokichi? Didn't you go right back to the salon after finding the roof door locked? You use underhanded tactics too, huh, Shuichi? So who are you guys gonna believe? Shuichi or me? There's 
no doubt that Kikichi is the culprit. We all saw that footage from earlier, right? Kaito got crushed to death. Horrible video. Whoever committed that crime was with Kaito in the hangar. Which just leaves Kokichi then. The culprit is... Kokichi Oma, the mastermind of this entire killing game. And Kaito's killer. There's no doubt that Kokichi is the culprit. We all saw that footage from earlier, right? Kaito got crushed to death. I still don't believe it. Is that video real? It could have been edited to make it look like Kaito was killed by the press. Damn right! There's no way this luminary of the stars would die that easily. I do again? Better if it turned out like that. <laughs> you wish. Like I said, that footage isn't edited at all. It recorded the event completely as is. Kaito was crushed! His bones went crunch and his organs went squish! Oh. I remember the video. And all my bittersweet memories of him. Hold those memories within you, or they'll just escape a sour vomit. But we all know Kokichi loves to lie, and that he's a remnant of despair. That leads me to believe there's something he's not telling us about that video. I don't think that video showed the murder at all. All we saw was a living body. A living body? <laughs> I don't blame you for not believing it. It's hard to believe a smug idiot like Kaito got squished like a bug, right? But your lie won't work here, Shibichi. No, what you said isn't even a lie. It's just wishful thinking. Isn't this enough? Kokichi is the culprit. He brought the evidence and he even confessed to the murder. That doesn't make sense. Not even Kokichi would do something that stupid. Is common sense going to work here? On the remnants of the spear, I mean? Oh, a hit! I got a hit! Shuichi, I got a hit containing some important info. A hit? The word living stuck out to me, so I ran a search for that word in my memory bank. And there was one hit. Uh, do you mean you remembered something? What important info was in your search hit? The living organism detector that we found when we investigated the press. The existence of this detector refutes the very premise of this discussion. Of course, the safety function. The video does not show Kaito's murder. Safety function? Yes, it was written on the safety precaution. The hydraulic press will automatically stop if its infrared sensor detects a living organism. So the hydraulic press won't move at all if there's a living person under it? Which is why it couldn't have been used to kill Kaito. Which means it's more likely that Kaito was crushed after being killed by some other means. So what we saw in 
in that video. He was already dead by then? But you could disable the infrared sensor of the safety function with an electrobomb. If someone was piloting the exosol, they could have used it to enter the hangar. That's not possible. Is operating the exosol really that difficult? Do we even know how to get inside an exosol? Outside the hangar, there were four exosols. And they were all moving, too. I was controlling them remotely. The electro hammers weren't an option. Yesterday, all the hammers were still recharging. There's no way to stop an exosol. So getting inside one would have been impossible. You're right! It's impossible! If someone was piloting the exosol, they could have used it to enter the hangar. That's not possible. Is operating the exosol really that difficult? Do we even know how to get inside an exosol? Outside the hangar, there were four exosols. And they were all moving, too. I was controlling them remotely. The electro hammers weren't an option. Yesterday, all the hammers were still recharging. There's no way to stop an exosol. So getting inside... I'll reveal the truth! While investigating the exosols, I noticed that they have no locks on their cockpit hatches. It should have been possible to get into the cockpit, providing they could reach it. But that's reckless, absurd, and useless. Jump inside a moving exosol? That's not really possible. No, I think it is. You would need to be quick, agile, athletic, and stealthy. I can think of at least one person who fits that description. What? Are you implying that it's... Oh, I see. And since he's a robot, he could have some robo-communication function. Huh? Was that directed at me? As I said, my speed, agility, and strength are equal to that of a human, if not weaker. So I cannot fight an exosol, and I certainly cannot communicate with one. The selling point of being a robot is being good in combat, but... Poor Kibo. Please don't act like I drew the short straw. Stop this pointless conversation, Shuichi. If you want to say something, say it already. Uh, Maki, just to confirm. As the ultimate assassin, you would be able to jump into that exosol, correct? Impossible. If I could do that, I would have turned the exosol into scrap on the first day. Maybe. Unless you were hiding your true potential. In which case... Stop messing around. Are you telling me to prove something I can't do? Do you really suspect me that much? No, actually. I'm trying to find a way to prove that you couldn't be the intruder. Fine then. I'll explain. There was another problem that doesn't involve my talent. You said earlier that the hatch doesn't have a lock, but that's incorrect. The Exosol's hatch has an electronic lock, so it can't be opened from the outside. What? An electronic lock? Yes. You can't open the hatch from the outside. It's impossible to get into the cockpit. Satisfied now? How do you know there's an electronic lock on the Exosol's hatch? Because I checked it during the investigation. That can't be true. 
I'm the only person Monokuma told about those locks. Just you? I see. If that's the case... Then you lied just to confirm if I knew about the electronic lock. Yes, I did. And I'm sorry. I thought you were hiding something from me, Maki. I was confirming my suspicion. Now please, tell us the truth. How do you know about the hatch? When Monokuma explained it to you, I just happened to overhear it, that's all. You're lying, Maki. You know about the locks because you've been inside one of the cockpits. So annoying. Do you want to die? You're the one who's lying. Huh? That's a suspicious thing to say. Are you actually the culprit, Maki? Either way, there's an electronic lock so you can't open the hatch from the outside. Because of that, no one could have entered the hangar piloting an Exosol. Maki's saying it's impossible, but there is a way to open the hatch. Oh, you mean with your magic, right? I won't say such a lame thing anymore. I can't stay a dreamer forever. That lock is electronic, so won't an electro hammer work on it? That would let you stop an Exosol and open its hatch. Of course. My magic is also an option. A dreamer to the end, huh? True. With an electro hammer, that method might be possible. But the electro hammers were recharging yesterday, so entering an exosol would be. Uh, wait! Not all of the electro hammers were being charged. All right, let's pin this down. Who is inside that Exosol? Hmm? Kaito, right? That's what you said, isn't it? Kokichi's the one who died! And the culprit is Kaito standing right there! Isn't that correct? <laughs> of course not! I would never die! I trust Shuichi! All right, let's pin this down. Who is inside that Exosol? Hmm? Kaito, right? That's what you said, isn't it? Kokichi's the one who died! I'll reveal the truth! Kokichi, I'm sorry. I just can't lie for you anymore. What? What do you mean, lie? Why did you say Kokichi? The one in the Exosol is... I'm so sorry, everyone. I've deceived you all. Huh? The truth is, after we found the crushed body, I... saw Kokichi. <gasps> you saw Kokichi?! Yes. He threatened me, told me that if I didn't do what he said, he'd kill us all.
I'll put a stop to this killing game. You can't stop it! Thunder Rampa ends! I'll be out of a job! Even if this is all fake, our suffering and pain is real. It was rough for me, too. It's a death thing. What the fuck you gonna do? Ain't it better to just let it end with despair? I reject both hope and despair. I reject a world that would make us do this. Which is why I abstain from voting. So this won't end in hope or despair. You can't throw away your futures. Hope is contagious. I'll put a stop to this killing game. You can't stop it! If Dungan Rampa ends, I'll be out of a job! Even if this is all fake, our suffering and pain is real. It was rough for me, too. It's a death thing. What the fuck you gonna do? Ain't it better to just let it end with despair? I reject both hope and despair. I reject a world that would make us do this. Which is why I abstain from voting. So this won't end in hope or despair. You can't throw away your futures. Hope is contagious. It should end with hope, but still. Ebo, what are you doing? Did your inner voice really tell you to do that? Did it tell you to reject hope? No. My inner voice is still telling me not to give up on hope. But if that hope demands tragedy from us, then I cannot trust it. I may be a robot. But the thought of my friends dying still fills me with sadness. I don't want anyone else to feel this way. So, I will abandon hope. Do you know what will happen if you do that? To defy the audience? I don't give a damn. This killing game is over anyway. New characters are created just to show the outside world a fictional hope. They get written into these killing games, forced to betray one another. And at the end of the slaughter, the tragedy, the despair, hope always wins. Well, I've had enough of it. We're gonna end this right now! We won't let it end the way they want. We won't make a good ending or a bad one to win this killing game and end it forever. We will reject Danganronpa.